Hi guys, Aubrey Jo here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about these cute little cake pops, the beehive and bee cake pops. And so the first thing that you're going to do for these is you're going to take whatever cake recipe is your favorite. I always put my cakes in a sheet pan because it just is the easiest to get a lot of cake out of it. It was vanilla today. You're going to take that cake and you're going to crumble it all up once it's cool. I mean literally just smash it all up. This is the old fashioned way to make cake pops. I, there are cake pop machines now, but that's the cheater's way. Just saying, this is how you make them from scratch. And I'm gonna add some frosting to get the perfect texture and I'll show you that texture. And we're going with yellow since they are bumblebee cake pops. And you're just gonna mix in with your hands, so make sure your hands are clean. You're gonna mix your frosting in all the way into all of the crumbled up cake and the texture you're looking for is honestly quite wet. It will look especially this because it's vanilla. Chocolate looks, looks a little less gross and the yellow doesn't make it, the yellow frosting doesn't make it look much more appetizing either. But it's gonna look kind of gross. It needs to be pretty moist. That's in fact how the cake pop stays together. That's why cake pops that are made this way are, this looks disgusting, I'm sorry, but cake pops that are made this way are so much more moist than those that are made in a machine. So see kind of that sticky, moist, sandy texture. So now that you've got all of your frosting mixed into your cake, you're gonna have your cake pop sticks ready and then you're gonna use some candy melts, melted candy melts, which is essentially like white chocolate and whatever color you need to use. These are This is the brand I'm using, it's Wilton and you need some of that melted to stick your stick into your cake pops and I have a bit of water just in case too in case my hands get too gross. So you're just gonna take the amount kind of the size you want for your cake pop and see how because the frosting is already all mixed into that cake it's gonna make it stick together really nice. I always roll it into kind of a log first to get all the pieces together and then I will mold it into the circle and then once it is a circular shape, the shape you want it, then you will stick your cake pop stick into some of your white chocolate and then into the cake pop and that's gonna help it stick. And then I'm going out of frame but then I'm just wiping the excess chocolate off of the stick. And then once I get all of these done and I get them all shaped up and put onto their sticks, I will then stick them into the freezer for about 20 minutes just so that the chocolate and the cake really stick together. And now I'm just going to show you over and over again in fast motion how long it takes to do these bad boys. So now that I've showed you how to do a just a circular cake pop, which is the most common honestly, I'm going to show you how I shaped these honeycomb ones, or the beehives. And so I'm just going to take it, you take a little bit more than you would need for a circular one, and I'm just going to shape it into the beehive shape. And then after I have gotten it into the shape that I want, which can take a little bit of time and each one can look a little different and that's okay. I'm going to take a cake pop stick and I'm going to use that to draw the lines in it that will stay once I dip it into the chocolate so then you can see the lines because of the different texture. And sorry I'm kind of going out of frame here. When I work on cakes they're usually beneath me and so I forgot that I was raising my hands up that high. So sorry about that, but I see I'm just taking this stick and going all the way around just to push that in to make it look like a beehive. And 
now here comes more fast motion of me making a million beehives. Not really a million, but quite a few. So this is another thing that I love to talk about when people pay for things like this is these videos are a great tool for people who don't do cakes to watch and to see just how long it takes to make these things and how much time, how much effort, all of that goes into making these treats. And so although you think they're just something that I'm going to eat and be done with, if you want something that you're going to remember and that you're going to take pictures of and you clearly want something very cute, you just have to remember all the time and all the effort that cake decorators and pastry chefs and everyone go through. It's just like an art and so it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of talent. And these fast motion videos, they go by quite quickly, but just think about how much time is really going into making these cake pops. Every single individual cake pop takes a lot of time. And that's why some of these creations can be quite expensive and I think that's just something these videos are great to show people who don't do this kind of thing just how much time and how much effort goes into making these little treats. So after these have sat in the freezer for about 20 minutes and hardened up, I'm going to take a cup full of white chocolate candy melts that I have melted. And a cup works best for this just because of the depth of the cup. It's better than a bowl. And I just dip it in, I hold it upside down, I wiggle it around and just wait patiently for all that excess to drip off as much as you can because if you don't let it drip off, it will just end up running down the stick or getting a big huge like ball on the end of the cake pop. And so it's important to really try to focus on letting it drip off and just taking your time. And now that I have finished covering all of the white ones, I'm going to take a couple of them that split. Sometimes that happens when you put them in the freezer and they don't acclimate enough after they've been taken out of the freezer before you cover them in chocolate. Sometimes they will crack a little bit and so I always like to give them a few minutes and I will dip those that need to be dipped again. Or you can take your finger and put some chocolate on it and go over the crack with the chocolate or a paintbrush, either one, and rub on it and you can fill the cracks with the chocolate as well. That's something else that I do. And so then after I cover again some of the ones that got a little cracked in the waiting process, I'm gonna take these little bees, and they're from Wilton as well, they're little candy bees, and I'm gonna put them on all of the white ones. They're very cute. And so for that one, since I had just dipped it, I just put it straight on. But for the rest of them, I will take a cake pop stick and put some white chocolate on the bee. And then I will stick the bee to the already dried cake pop. So 
So I did end up doing the rest of the circular balls in yellow as well, just to have a mix of white and yellow. And then now I am doing the beehives in yellow. And I did a couple of them and I wasn't really happy with the texture, it was a little too thick. And so you will see the next one that I do will be a little bit better. I was much happier with it because I went and I thinned the chocolate down with some oil and that's a great trick. You cannot use any water-based products with chocolate, of course it will seize, but you can use oil. So I thinned it out a little bit with oil and as you can see on this one that I'm doing, it's a little thinner and you can see the lines in it a lot better. some other little bees left over and so for the ones that were going to be beehives I used the rest of them to stick onto the beehives in the same manner that I stuck them onto the white cake pops. Then I bought this candy decorating pen from Wilton that is meant to draw on cake pops with. And to say the least, I was very disappointed in it. I had never drawn on cake pops before. I decorated them in a lot of different ways, but this pen is literally meant for that and it just didn't work. The oils and everything didn't mix well together and I will show you a little close up of me trying to draw on with this. And it worked somewhat, but it just wasn't thick and it wasn't meshing. Every time I would try to go over it, it would just rub right off. And I had seen many videos of people using this and they always seemed to work, but that just didn't happen for me. I gave it my all. I had a lot of other different edible pens as well that I tried to use and nothing just seemed to work. It actually made me extremely frustrated <laughs> and I just kept trying and thinking of ways that I could fix it as you can see it's very streaky and not thick and so I didn't end up recording the rest of my decoration process because I was just honestly too flustered and that's kind of the name of the game you know sometimes you go into something and you think you have it totally figured out and then all of these little treats just throw you for a head spin and sometimes things that have worked in the past don't work this time and so you just really have to adapt and adjust your way of thinking and so for the little bumblebees with wings by the way those wings are just candy melts cut in half and then I stuck them on but I ended up getting pieces of fondant for the bees for their stripes instead of drawing on them and wrapping that around and then also for the holes for the beehives I did that as well I was able to get enough out of the pen to do the little zigzags of the bees flying around but that was about it so it was really frustrating, but I took them to the party, and they were a huge hit. Everyone loved them. They tasted really good, so all my hard work, I guess, paid off, and all my frustration. But that is it, you guys. Those are the little bumblebee and beehive cake pops, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I can't wait for the next one. Thanks!